Hey, what's up guys and gals? My name is Rick Nige. Thank you so much for joining me today. Looking at my third lesson on the journey to getting my pilot's license. Now I wanted to make this video a little different and I wanted to give you just a kind of a tour and a thoughts and impressions on what is going on uh, during this lesson and this day. So we're walking out of the hangar here and uh, they actually build planes in this area. And I'm going with my instructor, Sam. We're heading to the plane. He's giving me some heads up and things like that. But I'm gonna do a couple of things here. I wanted to show you some of the things that I was doing. First being a checklist. A checklist is what you do right before you fly up in the air. You make sure that your plane is safe. You check it, you check the parts, you check the wheels, you check the fuel. There isn't one stone that is left unturned about this plane. Now before I get into the actual checklist, I wanna show you what I do. I have a bag that I usually take with my cameras and just some of my headgear and thing, like headsets basically, and I put it in the back of the plane and we start with our checklist. This is what the airplane looks like with our joysticks. We have the seat pads, things like that with that we're using. And it's a pretty exciting thing. It's a very compact plane. It's a very snug fit, but uh, that's what we fly. Now I'm beginning the lesson by flipping a couple switches and making sure that the electronics are on and we begin the checklist. I'm not going to go through every single thing, but I want to go through a couple highlights, a couple things that you guys might seem interesting. Like right now I'm flipping on the lights to make sure that they work and I'm going to be going around the plane. Now beginning with the first lesson, my instructor Sam, he did the checklist by himself. The second lesson he kind of went through and taught me what the checklist entitled and explain each and every one of the items. However, by this time, he was just going over some key points, but he handed me the checklist, and essentially, I did the whole thing, everything from brakes to checking the flaps, the ailerons, all the parts of the plane. It was pretty cool because he was relegated to more of a supervisor position, making sure that I didn't glance over anything or mess anything up, but it was a great experience to go through it. I'm skipping over a lot of material for this video, but I'm checking things right now like the antenna, the transponders. I even have a little tube there that checks the fuel quality to make sure that our fuel is clean and safe to use for the flight. Now by this point we are now inside the plane and going through a checklist while we're inside the plane making sure that it is properly heated up, everything is working correctly, everything from the electronics to the radio navigation. We want to make sure that everything is nice and safe right before we take off. A lot of people don't think about this but it is very very important to make sure that your plane is safe. We do more checks on a plane than we do in a car before we go and drive it so I think it gives everyone a great deal of safety knowing that we try to prevent any accidents. Now, of course, I want to tell you my struggles, but also my successes. One of my struggles is basically the pedals and the brakes and being able to steer the plane because you steer it with the pedals left to go left and right to go right. And it's, it's kind of counterintuitive for me. It's a little bit difficult, but I guess that's what the practice is for. And you can see me wavering one side to one side. And again, it's tricky, but Sam is there to help me and make sure that uh, I do the best that I can, but you can see here, I'm totally off the line and I could have cut this out, but for the benefit of the video, I wanted to leave this in there and show you that, yeah, I have my struggles, I'm trying to improve, and this is just part of what it means to learn how to fly. We get to the end of the runway to an area called the run-up, and what we do here, we basically put the airplane to its maximum power setting so we can test the brakes and we can make sure that oil pressure, oil temperature, all that stuff is good and safe. Make sure that our spark plugs are working. There are two spark plugs for each cylinder. It's a four cylinder airplane. And it's just good to know these things, uh, especially if you're not a pilot to know what's going on. But I'm looking through the checklist here, but it's an interesting thing because again, there's so much safety. And uh, I think that's one of the benefits of knowing how to fly, that we go through all these things to make sure that everyone is safe and has a good time. We look to the left, we look to the right, we make sure the ailerons are working, the rudder in the back is working, the elevator. We wanna make sure, again, that all the control surfaces are working before we get in the air. We don't test them out when we're already in the air. After we finish what is called the run-up, I was a little bit better here with the pedals. It was about three weeks between the time when this video was filmed and the last video was filmed, we had a lot of cancellations in terms of weather and extremes that we wanted to avoid. So again, I was a little bit rusty. One cool thing is you can see a plane coming right in. We were just holding short for that plane and just getting everything ready to make a great takeoff. And here we are guys and gals. I decided to cut the whole flight off of the video. One of the reasons is because we did a lot of going up and down, left and right. We mostly did maneuvers 
and these maneuvers are to help me to make sure that I can keep the plane leveled or I can pitch up or down properly, I can descend and ascend. There was a lot of air traffic that was involved and so we had to do tons of maneuvers. We flew for nonstop, close to two hours and it was very enjoyable. It was very challenging. I had my struggles with keeping the plane leveled and descending and you know, there's some things that I struggled but I also had a lot of strengths. We did slow flight, which was another interesting thing that I think I did pretty well in for doing it for the first time. But yeah, there are gonna be struggles and difficulties, but there are also gonna be some strengths as well. So I just wanna point these things out to you. Of course, you see us now back on the ground and tying the plane back, making sure that it is safe and ready to store here for the next person to go and fly it. Making our way back into the flight school, I just wanted to give you a little bit of a tour of the place. So we go right through this door, which is rented out as a type of a hangar where they can build different parts of a plane. Yes, they do have a ping pong table and uh, it's a pretty nice little flight school. They have a lot of things that you can use. There's snacks and things like that. And this is the time where we come in, we debrief. There are other pilots just talking to each other. Um, and it's a great little camaraderie that they have here. It's pretty cool just to see and enjoy. Here my instructor is filling out a lot of forms that we just have to do right after a flight, including filling out my hours for my logbook and certifying that yes, I did fly and those hours are for me to collect. So hopefully you like this type of video. It was very different from what I did. Uh, the camera was in a different position. Again, very different. I wanna give you more of my thoughts on this flight. Every flight's different and every flight I wanna point out different things and hopefully you enjoy this. Next flight will probably be different and I'll lay it out in a different way. So thank you so much guys and gals for watching. I do appreciate you being on this journey with me. As we get into more things, things will advance. We'll get more cameras in different places and uh, hopefully you enjoy it. We'll see you all next time and don't forget, be hopeful.